the Easter break has finished. The stream shall start in just a hot moment. How much a hot moment? Uh, usually I go three, two, one, and then I clap. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the stream. It is the B and I stream today on this fine seventeenth of April, twenty twenty-three. I hope you have had a wonderful two weeks because it's been two weeks since the last stream, uh, and uh, I hope your next one week because. Yeah, I should have really given the two-week head uh, heads up right at the beginning. But yeah, uh, this past week was Easter. So I spent uh, the Monday just kind of chilling with my family. You know, I haven't seen them in a while. It's good fun. And uh, yeah, no, it's 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 pretty chill. And the week before, we finished uh, the third of various Harry Potter 1 games. There are two more. I shall leave it there. And we're going to start a new venture. Or is it a new venture? I don't know. So how about let's uh, jump ship. So let's see how easily I can do this. One, two, three. Oh, I accidentally started streaming the, um, the audio twice, sorry. Uh, but yes, it's a uh, Sony Computer Entertainment um, America game, I guess, because I'm playing a, a US version. Uh, but yeah, though this stream, uh, I'll be playing through part of Spyro the Dragon 2. You can, it says it right here. Spyro, comma, 2, Ripto's Rage. Um... So yeah, I love this transition. It's a very nice and smooth transition. Uh, but Spyro 2 is the second of the three Spyro games, and I grew up with this one as a kid, and I shared it well on my channel ages ago. Like, hold on, legitimately, I, I'm going to do a quick time not timestamp, but like, I'm just going to see at what point do I have a, a video title with Spyro in the name. Uh, Let's Play Spyro 2 on my YouTube channel. Uh, created... I did, I know I did a replay uh, in 2009, but I did my original playthrough in also 2009, mostly around late March. So, it's been 14 years since I played it then, and then, oh, March 2010. Okay, it's been 13 years since I played it before, uh, but I feel like... That is actually half a lifetime ago, wow. Um, but for me, uh, Spyro 2 holds a, a nice place in my heart uh, as a game that is different to the original. And I think the easiest thing to really get into is just, let's start the game up. Let's just get into it and we'll show you what's different. But yeah, uh, I played through Spyro 1 on my channel in August. I'm going to make a lot of uh, allusions to that. So I recommend, um, if, you, if you don't know much about Spyro 1, uh, tune into this and then watch that stream. Is this rain ever gonna stop? I've forgotten what the sun looks like. We should go on vacation. Somewhere warm. Somewhere sunny. Dragon Shores. Yeah, I haven't been there since we kicked Nasty Nork's butt. How about it, Sparks? You up for a vacation at the beach? Last one there is a Nork! Uh, yes, that is, by the way. That is Tom Kenny. This game features, uh... Six voice actors doing the work of basically every character in this game. Is it working, Professor? Almost. Just in including this professor is still Tom Kenny. One thing I want to know about all these cutscenes. This isn't such a good idea. There's no pop filter. Dragon here could just make Ripto angrier. Calm down, Hunter, and stop fidgeting. You're just gonna hear a hu huge, like, huge puff of air every time they make a puss sound. And they spit fire like this. Oh, it hurts. dangerous than Ripto. That's exactly the point. A dragon is our only chance of stopping Ripto, and you know it. It's working. Sorry, let me get rid of my pop filter and say Ripto. I'm sorry, everyone. I had to do it. Oh gosh. Whoa, rough landing. Hi, which way's the beach? That that hey, that's exactly what I do when I see a purple a thing talk. You're a dragon? You got a problem with that pussy cat? Oh. Massive flips from the professor, and he's still landing on his feet. Well, someone forgot to invite me to the party. Were you trying to keep something from me? Oh, the depth buff for calling on crushes. A dragon? You brought a dragon to Avalar? I hate dragons! Ah! Ow! Crush! Kill it! Kill it! Fuck. Go! You imbecile! You ain't my scepter! Who is that 
jerk. That was Ripto, and we have to get rid of him. He's causing all sorts of trouble around here, but I haven't got time to explain. Here, take this magic guide to Avalon. It'll help you begin to understand our worlds. Right now, I have to follow Ripto and see what he's up to. I'll meet you in Summer Forest, okay? Hey, wait a minute! Uh, how do we get ourselves into these messes, pal? So it definitely starts off with a lot more cutscene than the original game. Um, and especially one thing you'll find right off the bat, I guess Spyro 1, you know, you walk forward, you touch a dragon and he talks to you. Uh, but this one... Hi Spyro! Welcome to Glimmer! Unfortunately for us, a mob of lizards just showed up and started stealing all of our gems. Can you stop them? Yeah, every level consists of a bunch of characters. All the characters almost look alike, and uh, they're all voiced by the same person. So, um, or at least within the level. Uh, but yeah, this this game starts off by being in the first level. There's a lot of differences right off the bat, like, what is that? What's going on there? Um, I'll probably explain the differences uh, pretty much. Um, yeah, you got enemies that you got a flame because they're too big. You got gems, just like the first game. But killing an enemy doesn't drop a gem. Instead, it uh, releases their soul, I think. They'll explain it later. Um, but uh, as you pause the game, and I love how it does the uh, the Crash 2 uh, kind of, you know, whoosh on the, the screen buffer. And it's a pretty seamless effect. Like, I could do that for ages, man. So quick. Uh, but you'll see the number of souls uh, there. 3 out of 14, which is the pi number. Um, that just indicates that there are 14 enemies on this level. Uh, and um, you don't have to exactly kill all of them. But you have to kill enough of them because they will activate a power-up gate uh, in the level. I'm not too sure if there's ever a level with two of them. Like, two different numbers. Um, every level, by the way, also always has 400 gems. That's a interesting thing to note. Uh, so right off the bat, it's like, oh, look at that, we're getting lots of gems, and, uh, the only real big catch on this is that, uh, you know, well, what are gems used for? In the previous game, uh, you would need so many gems or dragons in order to access the later worlds. In this game, uh, you're, you really just have to get to the end of the level, and then you get a talisman. We'll get to that in a moment. Hi, Spyro. I'm a friend of Why is it so much quieter? Whenever you find me, I'll remember your progress like this. And there goes a million brain cells. That zap means that if you get into trouble, I'll return you to this place. See you around. Now, I'll definitely say, uh, Zoe giving you the zap, uh, is a lot clearer of an indicator of you getting a checkpoint than, uh, you know, just standing on a pad. I love the, <laughs> like, this guy running around. Is he chasing the guy? Is the guy chasing him? Oh, I guess he's, he's chasing him. I like how there's a lot of, uh, well, I guess the first game kind of did it as well, didn't they? We gem cutters are a bit too short to climb these ladders. Looks like you are too. After you learn to climb, come back to Glimmer to see me. Uh, I shall employ just a tiny bit of sequence breaking in this level. Uh, because as a kid, I knew about the sequence breaking. There exists a really gnarly glitch, uh, which I shall demonstrate near the end of uh, the playthrough, uh, and so not on this stream. Um, but uh, for now, I will stick with my very mild sequence break of just this one uh, bit. But basically, uh, how this game works is that, yeah, you just need to be able to get to the end of the level and you get a talisman. The talismans collect enough, or actually collect all of them, for all the levels in the world, and you'll be able to access uh, the boss. Uh, that works for the first two worlds. For the third world, you need so many orbs. You'll spot that there are uh, three little circles at the bottom, and on top of that there's a number next to Spyro's head there. That's a zero. Uh, orbs are basically your dragons. Uh, like, in the sense of, you know, every level has a handful of them, and you'll need so many of them in order to, I guess, beat the game. There's just a door that opens well, when you've got 60, I'm there is a 50 of them. Fee to open the bridge. It will cost you 100 of your gems to cross. I love this guy. I love this guy's voice actor. He did, I I remember, he did the um, the United Paper Man, the United Paper Guy in GTA 4. And he briefly shows up in a uh, GTA Online mission in GTA 5, so. Uh, this is your requirement of gems. You don't need gems in the game until Moneybags demands that you need gems. Uh, you will not be able to get past this bridge unless you pay him 100 gems. Thank you, Mr. Dragon. Spyro, was it? You can now use the bridge whenever you want, free of charge. 
I hope we meet again when you have even more gems. What a what a big tease. Uh, but yeah, that's a that's a new mechanic of you know money bags requiring you to pay them for stuff. Um, oh, hi. To get a good look around. Hold down the triangle button. Try using triangle to look around this cave. I guess the tutorials are a little bit less organic than they were in the first game, though, whereas, like, you know, you just come across a dragon and he'd tell you a tip, and suddenly, like, you know, the culmination of all these tips really helps you throughout the game. Um, a lot of these Spyro 2 levels also... Spyro, you can kind of get to the end, lizard, real quick. Please take this talisman of glimmer as a sign of our gratitude. Uh, but yeah, this is the end of the level, so to speak, but, uh, like the first game, every level has nooks and crannies all over the place. The portal next to me will take you to Summer Forest, one of the homeworlds of Avalar. Uh, but yeah, no, so, uh, pretty much your goal is just to walk over to this guy and exit the level, really. Um, you didn't even need to fight, like, defeat any enemies in order to get here. You just gotta make your way. But if you notice that, yeah, you could just kind of walk outside this building and now you're in this kind of back area of the level. Complete with its own gems. Uh, note that the counter at the top left is your current gems, not your total. So that should actually be stopping at 300, not uh, uh, 400, just because I'm already 100 down. Uh, Great! The Superfly power-up is active! And you can restart our gem lamps. Flame all the lamps quickly, and the big gem lamp will light. The power up will give you enough magic to fly for a short time. Oh yeah, yeah. So this guy is also referring to. I love how they give you a little bit of the tips, uh, a couple of tips of how to do this, as well as how difficult this is. But basically, all the orbs are actually these little like kind of mini challenges. So defeat enough enemies, this power up activates. Um, and it grants you the ability to fly for a bit, uh, which controls just like flying in the other Spyro game, so nothing too weird. Well, uh, most of the power-ups are pretty much as you'd expect, but they're all delivered through these gates. Um, fly around enough, so they all go out, and boom! We have lit, lit the gem. Thanks for helping me light the lamp spiral. A fairy gave me this orb, but I'd like gems better. You take it instead. You take it instead. <laughs> I'm not gonna even try my... My, uh, my impressions. But yep, he gives an orb. The orbs are... I love the model. The model is very, very nice. Um, but uh, yeah, there's no uh, downsides to constantly going back into the power-up, but they all have a time, you know, limit of how long they're active. Um, and I shall demonstrate uh, in this level as well, they have a, uh, a location limit as well. You're not allowed to fly in, you know, in the rest of the level. The game kind of tells you off for doing that. Um, it's not too noticeable in most of the rest of the game, but as a kid, I noticed that here, because I wanted to fly everywhere. I wanted to go, hey, where can I actually fly to? Can't I just fly over the edges of the level? And uh, they stop you here by uh, only letting you fly up so high. I can't keep flying higher than this. There does exist a hover mechanic, which, uh, yes, that did get uh, a little dangerously close to getting over the edge. Um, I shall demonstrate yet again, uh, but they'll show off this mechanic in a bit. It's just not enough. I will tell you that's just not enough. Um, here's a little, another mini game, another little, little side game here. These little lizards have eaten my entire crop of gems. I've tried hitting them with rocks, but they're too fast for me. You can try using one of my rocks. If you have any questions, just ask me. So, uh, was this, I don't think this was a mechanic in the first game. Uh, Spyro can just swallow things and he's got puppy cheeks and uh you just hit circle and he shoots the thing in his mouth my shooting follow me to the next lizard uh but yeah anyway this is uh basically a tutorial for i think i need the flying power up because i didn't shoot the thing um but uh it's basically a tutorial for shooting things there's gonna be a lot of these weird little mechanics that you'll only use a couple of times but uh, that's kind of the main difference of this game compared to the first game. The first game is a super consistent kind of mixture of collectathon elements. This game is a bit more Donkey Kong 64 in its design, which is, uh, I guess they both came out at roughly the same time. You can spit pretty far, Spyro! See if you can spit all the way to that lizard! But, uh, yeah, a lot of the little minigames are just kind of like, this is the only chance of this minigame, basically. It only appears in this one point in time when you're shooting these lizards, in this case. I mean, you're shooting things in 
some other parts of the game, but. To hit that lizard up high, you'll have to aim. Press the triangle button to aim, then press circle to spit. Wow. So, yeah, you get a little crosshair if you, you're able to. Okay. Okay. Well, take two. Take two. There we go. There we go. So now he's gonna he's gonna wander off because there's, there's a bunch of these uh, little you know orb mini games that uh, take place across the whole level as well. Um, there's a lot of gems over there. You might notice as well. Hmm, that seemed a little ominous. Me uh, flaming that lamp. I'll get to that in a moment. That's my sequence break. You do need to beat this level. You need to get to the end, and there isn't a level that you can't like walk to the end of. Um, but yeah, unlike uh, Spyro 1, where every level can be beaten the first time you come across it, this game does expect a couple of backtracking kind of occasions in order to, you know, when you get a, a, a later uh, ability. Every world has an ability, you'll need to buy the ability and then uh, come back to the levels. And so that means that there's going to be a little bit of backtracking that I'm doing, uh, but every stream, I'm going to try and make this the plan, every stream is going to be one of the three worlds, and I will go back, I will, you know, beat the world and then get the next power up and go back and uh, use it every time that is, you know, that you have to. Um, fortunately, there are no uh, levels in the first world that require the third world uh, ability. So that means I can actually pull that off. Um, I believe the third world is also going to be a bit shorter, so that leaves some room for te uh, teasing some stuff at the end. Save my crop of gems from the lizards. Here, take this orb. Some girl with wings dropped it here yesterday. Wow. Uh, so how about? Oh, nah. I'm, I'm not gonna tease the the strat. Speedrunners do this all the time. Oh, I love it. You can also steal this if you want to. So well. he actually has a line for this. You can have as many rocks as you like. It's just, it's just a line. There's a lot of fun little lines of dialogue throughout this game. Um. But definitely, man, that's a lot of lines of dialogue, you know? The first game, literally, you just talked to a dragon, and then it was like, that was it. Cool Flash, do that again. But now it's just like, you know, here's my premise for this whole bit, um, for this whole minigame. So, anyway, here's the ladder. We can't go up it, but, uh, as a kid, I found out that you can, indeed, get that Superfly to kick in all the way here. It doesn't seem too far away, but when I used the Superfly, Note the bar on the right. Note how much time I have left. Once I start flying all the way through here. It looks like it should last. And then suddenly... It's just gone. But if you fly it just well enough and hover, you're able to get up here. And hey, uh, technically... Wait. You've got the superfly <laughs> power-up active. Now you can light the gem lamps in this cave. Yeah, you, you're not supposed to come here until you've got the uh, the ability from the second world. But I like doing the sequence break right now, because it's kind of annoying when you can't do it right now. Uh, so, just like the other one, you fly around in the cave. Uh, well, sorry, just like the other one, you fly around, you flame the, the six lamps. I will get these gems in a moment. They consistently keep calling them gems and... Oh. I botched it up. And, and the worst part is that... Uh, I don't want to be careless and accidentally lose my power up. So I can't get back up here easily. Okay, I'm gonna go around the other way. Hopefully me dropping down like that isn't too bad. Uh, but yeah, that's the main big difference of this game compared to the first game. The first game is very consistent as to like what all the mechanics are. This game is a lot more, you know, minigame style than I guess the third game even more so. And that kind of sows the Thanks differences. Thanks for helping me light the lamp, Spyro. For a while, I was afraid we were going to have to cancel tonight's baseball game. Here, somebody baseball. mix this orb in with the baseballs. And uh, that is indeed Orb 3 out of 3. Thanks, game, for letting us know. Um, let's grab those remaining few gems and then we're done with this level. Uh, but yeah, the levels are about the same length as they were in the first game. I would make the argument that... Um, you know, there's not really too many... Well, I guess the hidden parts are a little bit less hidden. The game is a bit more, you know, straightforward as to how it works. Um, or not straightforward, but like less mysterious in how it works. It's more just like, 
I guess a bit more variety? I don't, I don't know how to phrase it, really. TLDR, I do not like this game quite oh, as much as no. the first one. Maybe it's the cutscenes, not too sure. Maybe I'll explain it by by the end, I'll figure oh, out how to phrase hello. it. We didn't get a chance to introduce ourselves before. My name is Alora. And she's super oh, sunburnt in this. What are you, some kind of goat? I'm a fawn, you dork. Oh, sorry. Did you meet the gym cutters in Glimmer? Yeah, they gave me a souvenir too. They called it a talisman. They gave you a talisman? What? Is it special? I just stuck it in the guidebook you gave me. There are 14 talismans in Avalar, and they are all magical. If you can collect enough of them, they can be used to defeat... Uh, the Richter. enough is all of them. Hunter, where have you been? I, uh, got a little lost. Fun fact, Spyro's Hunter is voiced by the guy who's been doing the, the voice of Odie in I Garfield for 40 years. Spyro, look. There's no way you can get to Dragon Shores right now. Ripto and his monsters have taken over the castle here in the Summer Forest. You can tell he's taken over by the uh, change of scenery. And convince the inhabitants to give you their talisman. You can keep them in your guidebook. Hey, I could do that. Why doesn't the dragon just torch Ripto? Hunter, you can't even keep track of your running shoes. How can we trust you with 14 talisman? If you come across any orbs, they're important too. Loud I'll tell snap. You about them later. Okay, no problem. I'll collect a few talismans, give Ripto the old hot foot, and be in Dragon Shores by lunchtime. So, uh, yeah, that, that's basically the premise. You gotta be able to defeat Ripto, so you gotta get the talismans, and there you go. I guess the question is, compared to the first game where, you know, Nasty Nork just enslaves all of dragon kind except for the shortest dragon of them all uh this is more just like oh spyro has just been transported into a magical world and there is an evil guy uh because he, he hates dragons that's that's his premise basically and he kicks money bags out of the castle i guess notice how the uh the audio popping spyro, is not this an is the issue called summer forest there are portals to many of the Avalar It's only an issue around. during the, um, Unfortunately, you know, Ripto the full cutscenes. And we need your help. Start by retrieving the talismans from each of the worlds you go to. Uh, but yeah. So this is a, a hub world. All the hub worlds are actually perfectly safe. Uh, also, I guess, here's a difference. Spyro doesn't get, uh, silver heads of his. He just gets these purple butterflies. Or rather, Sparks does. And you get an extra life base on that. Um, you might also notice Sparks eats butterflies when he doesn't need to. He just goes for it. Um, I love this, by the way, as well. When you drop down, there's a, uh, well, there's a bunch of gems, but in particular, Hunter just appears up the top, and he chastises you because you don't know how to jump. Hiya, Spyro. Ripto smashed this bridge, so I guess you'll have to glide across it. Press X to jump, then press X again while you're still in the air to glide. Which also makes me then realize, oh yeah, you didn't have to know how to glide in order to even do any of the the previous level. Well, some of it, but not any of the required bits. Like, you, you literally just run around, pick up some gems, and call it a day. Um, but yeah, the hub worlds are a little bit more engaging and interesting than the first game. But I guess there's also, you know, half the number of hub worlds. Um, the music, by the way, is still, uh, Stuart Copeland. Uh, much different vibe than the first game, which was very, kind of, um, you know, keyboard jams and that kind of stuff. This is, a uh, well, the, the hub worlds are very, you know, filled with just kind of a synth drone. Uh, now, here's, uh, here's our blocker, I guess, for the rest of the game. Well, not for the rest of the game, but, uh, you're required to get the, um, to get the, the ability to traverse the ground, if that makes sense. Well, listen to Moneybag for a moment. Uh, sorry, Spyro. I'd love to teach you how to swim underwater, but not as much as I'd love to take your treasure. Wow. So, you need 500 gems in order to get underwater swimming. And every world, uh, the ability, so to speak, uh, is your barrier in order, you know, to access the rest of the hub. Um, there's actually, uh, not enough gems right now as well. Because you, you know, you could only have 300 
when you leave the previous level. And if you, even if you go around, there's just not quite another 200. Hi, Spyro. Before you entering another like level. You're pretty agile. Let's try putting it to a test. See if you can get up this first step. Press X and hold it down to get more hang time. More hang time, you say. So here's Hunter telling you how to jump. Can you do it? Okay, not bad. Now to make this next jump, you'll have to glide. Press X to jump, then press X again at the top of your jump to get the maximum glide distance. Oh, I got so like peeved as a kid because I'm like, oh, I'm trying, I can't get my maximum glide. Nice job. Me as a now try to do a hover. Press X to jump, then press X again to glide. Then when you reach the end of your glide, press triangle to hover. Hovering will give you extra height and distance. So this is a new mechanic um, from, you know, not from the first game, but basically, well, if you, if you goof it up like that. But uh, pressing triangle in the first game would just cause you to drop your, your flight. Uh, in this game, Spyro kind of hovers a little bit. And uh, you can't, like, if you try hovering right away, Spyro doesn't go anywhere. But if you're hovering late into your flight, he gains a bit of height. So it gets you just a little bit higher, hover, press triangle. you know, than you needed, well, than you originally wanted to. And that gets you a little bit more distance. It's just kind of a nice safety net. People like more safety nets than their platformers. Very good. Now for the hardest leap of all. You'll have to give this one everything you've got. Get a walking start, jump, glide, and hover just before you get to the edge of the platform. Don't forget to press forward on the D-pad or analog stick the when you hover. The D-pad or analog stick? Uh, just like the first game as well, uh, no right analog stick for camera. It's all L2 and R2. Wow, you're a pretty good athlete. If I hadn't lost my running shoes, I'd take you on for real. For now, here's an orb for your collection. Wow. And yes, there are indeed orbs in the hub worlds. The hub worlds are just as valid as levels as everything else. Uh, there is a ledge over there, I cannot reach it, but... Um, yeah, we'll not be able to get enough gems uh, without entering one of these two levels. Uh, you may think this level might be the nicest one because it is closer. Uh, do not be deceived, this level requires swimming in order to get everything. The level that's on the water doesn't. Sparks, the dragonfly following you around is your health indicator, Spyro. The brighter he is, the more hit points you have. Uh, sure, yeah. So, here we are, Colossus. Wow. Good old Colossus. Uh, also, every level starts and ends with a little cutscene telling you, uh, I guess, something about the inhabitants? Usually with a bit of a gag. Brah, he dead. There's a, there's a lot of just people who are definitely dead. A yeti has been rampaging around our home, but we've managed to trap him by shutting all the doors. If you talk to the other brothers, they will open the gates and guide you to him. <laughs> Now, there's definitely, uh, you know, jams that are not, uh, I guess, Stuart Copeland synth jams. Yeah, I think he's experimenting a bit more, um, and I, I do really dig his soundtrack on this one. I actually think it's, like, it's less catchy, but I like his variety of themes a bit more. Um, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll definitely concentrating, say that. concentrating, I should be able to open this door for you. So, uh, yeah, the gimmick of this level is that uh, you got all these guys and they uh, do a chant and something moves and allows you to keep going onwards in the level. Uh, your enemies are goats and yaks. Are oh, they buffaloes? Um, so, uh, here's, a, oh, here's a yak. There he is. I don't know why I was expecting to pick up a gem. But it's like, oh, yeah, not this game. Who needs a key when you know how to chant like this? Also, I guess you can see the souls kind of flying in that direction, kind of indicating that, yeah, there, there is a... You can see it right there, the pyramids. Enemies like those yaks are too big to be charged. 
Your flame attack should easily take care of large enemies. This is after the previous level, which did indeed have large enemies. Uh, no metal enemies yet. They have they have not quite introduced those. You can kind of just flame everyone for the moment. Um, yeah, you can see the, the soul thing kind of collects on the pyramids. And here's a good example. You need 11 in order to keep going. Each time you defeat an enemy, it will release a spirit particle. The spirit particles will activate the power-up in that world. If a power-up is inactive, you need to defeat more enemies. This is... this is not by the same person. I think they got someone else to do the take. They realized they had to get this line a bit too late. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I definitely... I definitely do still really enjoy this game, and I, I appreciate it for being different. Like, if there's anything with the Spyro trilogy, it's very nice that every game has, you know, its own quirks. And none of them truly replace the others. Hey, look what I can do! Uh, but they definitely do start pushing, you know, more and more things. I would definitely say the levels in this one are generally a bit more complex than the levels in the first game. There's just more going on, there's more like... I think there are more landmarks in general. Uh, on top of that, I like the variety of, um... You know, these, these like, characters, the kinds of set pieces. Remember Hunter's advice. You will glide farthest if you press the X button at the very top of your jump. Uh, she says this even when you haven't spoken to Hunter, like if you didn't do the, the other one, the other orb quest there. I should have defeated enough enemies by now. Oh, not yet. Really not yet. Oh, I think it's actually a good meme. I, I won't be able to show it at the very moment. But uh, yeah, when you do get, you know, the last... Or when you get 11, when you get the number that's in there, yes, it does turn or activate. But I love how notice I have 10 enemies defeated. Oh, translation. Transliteration. They didn't, they didn't subtitle that right. I also didn't fix that in the European version. The European version of the game, fun fact, is not called Ripto's Rage, but instead Gateway to Glimmer. Glimmer being the first level in the game. It has no bearing on the rest of the plot. By the way... I thought the Yeti was tougher than that. <laughs> I guess he was all bark. <laughs> anyway, I was just guarding our sacred talisman to make sure the Yeti didn't eat it. So, uh, yeah, that's the uh, end of this level, I guess. Look at that T-posing Colossus right there. Um, but yes, indeed, 11 enemies defeated. The Yeti is one enemy in the game. He is not just window dressing. He legitimately was there. Um, so how about, let's go this way, because I think, uh, yeah. Never, never trust that the level truly ends where you get the talisman as well. There's usually something chilling. Look at this RTX. Who needs RTX overdrive in the cyberpunk when you've got... Um, you know, very localized reflection. There's a nice reflection though, like, the effect works well. You even got like this kind of bright bit over here. I'd say it's a really good ice effect. It exists purely for this one, like, part, so you could probably just guess it's mirroring the floor, but still. Ah, Spyro, welcome! We have found that hockey is a peaceful and calming sport. Would you like to join in a match against our goalkeeper? Now, as a kid, I get very spicy over this game. You have two minutes to score five goals in the red goal. Now, this is actually a two-stage um, orb minigame, but it's definitely it's a minigame that just simply exists here. You get two minutes... And you want to try and catch the puck. I didn't catch it. You want to get the puck. And you want to kind of go one way and then go, haha, I'm going the other way. And he gets very upset. You just got to rinse and repeat that five times. Uh, not too bad. He does keep knocking the puck back in a different way. And it's a little hard to guess every time. But there's plenty of time to, to do the hockey. Unless you miss like that and you just fire it directly back towards your goals. And you got to be a little careful about that because uh, that's going to be the end of me. Um, now this game introduces a mechanic which is actually in uh, every... Oh, I'm not going to say every Insomniac game, but they carried it over into Spyro 3. And it also carries over into uh, Ratchet & Clank 1, 2, and 3. And it might be probably in other games. 
uh, by Insomniac, and that is what they refer to as skill points. Uh, the skill points are just, like, stylish extra, you know, not stylish extra, but just like a little bit of an extra stretch goal that you can achieve. Uh, but this game houses a, an actual kind of a kind of bonus if you manage to collect all 16 of the skill points. All of these are in uh, the uh, the remaster, by the way. So, and in fact, this game is kind of you know identical in the remaster. There's, there's not much that you really gain out of playing Spyro 2 and 3 in the remaster that you don't in the original versions. I don't really think there's anything, you know, hugely fixed or changed. Well done! Have this! He just gives you, gives you an orb. There you go. Orb number five. There are 64 orbs in the game, so... Would you like to try a game of one-on-one? -on -one? The first to score five goals wins. You are shooting at the red goal. Off you go. Now, I'm gonna try my best. We'll see how this goes. In order to get the skill point for this, there are 16 skill points in the game. In order to get the skill point, you have to not let, uh, not get a goal scored against you. Oh, dang. So you can flame the guy. Oh my gosh, really? Don't do it. Oh my gosh. That was the most horrendous thing I've ever done. The worst part, I don't think you can, I don't think you can run away. You can, you can fully bail. I don't think you can run away. He's just gonna, oh no, he yeah, can, okay. okay. <laughs> I was like, he's gonna keep scoring goals. He's still there, he's just chilling, but. You can get him to start again, so. I'm gonna try my best. It's not the most difficult, but uh, it's been, it's been a couple of days. Let's just say that. Okay, now when you get the puck, this guy is gonna body you, unless you're good, and you get around him like that. But yeah, make sure this guy is just on the floor constantly. Your teammate doesn't even, like, you know, shoot towards you. What? Hey, too good, too good. But yeah, I usually get, like, so salty about this, because I suck as a kid at any kind of sport game. Oh. That's super awkward. Oh. Oh, I'm going right. <laughs> I'm going right. He doesn't, he can't get me. I love how jamming the music is though. It's like, if you love the jamming music in the first game, this, this game still has its moments. And yes, if he bodies you, you spit out the puck. Oh, oh snap. I believe it is possible to, to just, like, walk it into the goal as well, if you're, if you're good enough. Whoa, that was close. Just, just hit it away, bro. Oh, I hate, I hate accidentally walking over it like that. Easy. You get a skill point, and uh, you'll, you'll get an extra life. You'll know that you well did it, because you got that sound. Have this. If you stare at it long enough, you might not see anything. I may not see anything, so... Hey, another child killer with a giant kill count from PS1. That is, that is true, I guess. Um, so yeah, you get the skill point, um, and uh, you can actually... I think we can kind of see it already in the guidebook. I love this, like... Oh no, you can't see it. Wait, hold on. Yeah, no, I guess you can't see it until the very end. There are 16 skill points, trust me, that was the first one. <laughs> so... And yes, that was uh, two of the level's three uh, orbs, just both this hockey game. Um, so we'll go back, we'll... We've got the spring bounce pad as we do. Um, but yeah, I guess, uh, yeah, my, my gist of this game... Like, I guess, the TLDR of maybe why I don't like it as much is I liked just kind of the organic and less directed way that the first game works. This is like, oh, I walked into a room and there was a cutscene and then the guy tells me exactly what oh, to do. Oh, thank goodness you scared that evil spirit And as much away, as I appreciate, hide in the statues. you know, it's you a change in pace, I think I have statues, a preference. Like, I'm that's sure kind of it. Chase it away for good. Um, there's also a bunch of missions that are kind of like that, where it's like, yeah, okay, there's ten things. There's, there's a number of things. Go get the things. I, I say this 
knowing that, you know, I'm playing a game where you collect a bunch of stuff. Uh, oh, it's Fire Remaster on sale. Go pick it up, everyone. It is, it's a good remaster. My only gripe with it is the camera doesn't quite feel as accurate. Like, it feels a little bit too close. Or too far. I can't, I think it's actually too far. These, uh, these statues, by the way, used to freak me out as a kid. Like, look at this. I'm like, ooh, why would I be there? But yeah. Um, so yeah, the Spyro Remaster, it's definitely worth, uh, the price. Um, just because I think it is super consistent. Does the job. Um. I definitely do prefer the originals. But I, I don't dislike really anything that's in the, the remaster beyond just the camera's a little bit close. And who knows, maybe there's a mod that fixes that. If there's one thing, I do actually like the improved cutscenes in the, uh, the remastered version. Some people will maybe say it's sacrilege to, you know, fix what ain't broke, but to be honest, I do think that the cutscenes in this game, um, could do with a bit of extra kind of polish. And, uh, you know, some of it's a limitation of the PS1, and some of it is just like, hey, you know, like, we have better animators in general. So I do like the, the animations that they've done. Waiting for a sale on Battlefront 2. Uh, that's Battlefront 2, the, the new Battlefront 2, or the old Battlefront 2? Uh, and I think one Bandicoot uh, on Switch already took the main platform with Attackless for me. Fair enough. Crash 4 is on the Switch, isn't it? Yeah. There you go, that's all the all the statues to get teleported back. Well done, Spyro! The new Battlefront 2. Ah. Spirit away. Why don't you take this? I borrowed it from the temple. Yeah, they don't need it. I think I only I only played New Battlefront 2 when they did the um the beta for it. And uh I do have that EA that E3 EA 2017 video where I kinda called it <laughs> I I'm very certain I called it Star Wars Battlefront 4. Um by the way, a bunch of levels will have uh, rockets, just like the first game. And it's always good fun just watching it go. They're just as entertaining. Almost got all the goods. I forgot, you can't, can't glide off that. Wait a minute, I could, I could glide off the first one. Well, I can speak. I could glide off the first one. I don't know what happened on the second one, but anyway, I'm up here. Uh, that should be everything. What am I missing? I remember you could walk around here on the top, but how many gems am I missing? Ten. It's always ten. It's always ten. Alright, let's play the fun game of wander around the level until I find the gems that I'm missing, but it shouldn't take too long. Um, but yeah, I, did I mention e E3 being cancelled on a previous stream? Did that happen within the last two weeks? Maybe I did miss that, but E3 has, uh, I guess, I don't want to say officially been cancelled, because it's not like, um, I did, okay, yeah. I don't think I really talked about it much, but I think for me it's like, man, you know, like that is kind of the end of an era, but it's also one where it's like, it makes complete sense why we don't need E3 anymore. The whole point of E3 is for the journalists, and the journalists don't, you know, we get so many press statements directly. You know, Nintendo Direct, Sony said to play, uh, Microsoft the Bouncer did the same thing every time they need, they want to announce something, Sega does it, um, Square Enix does it, uh, Capcom does it, it's just like, uh, it was a little confused I thought of. Uh, but like, everyone does it. No one relies on the journalists at all, really, anymore. Uh, so, you know, cut them out, basically. We don't need an E3 if none of that stuff. The one thing I do wish is that game publishers would have more hands-on, uh, like, demos. Uh, because there's a lot of games out there where it's like, we don't get to really try them out. Um... But, you know, that that's an easy problem to solve. That's not, you know, E3. Um, and honestly, hey, you know, I kind of prefer more announcements sprinkled throughout the year than... Big... You know, E3's cancelled. Dr. Robotnik won the war. Yeah, true, yeah. Okay, I just ran around uh, what I thought was most of the level, and I did not see the 10 gems. Like, these levels aren't too massive. 
So unless it's like hiding up the back here and I just missed it. It's not like on this wall. No. Where am I missing it? I I will say as well, uh, I've claimed to speed run, or at least kind of quickly run, Spyro 1. Uh, Spyro 2 is one that I know I've taken like four and a half hours on, and that's it. Oh, really? Well, that makes it worse. There were five gems hidden in the corner. But not the ten I needed. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, they'll show up in a moment. I do remember always missing, like, this pit. I, rem I remember always missing that, but... Did this happen in my Spyro 1 playthrough, where I did I miss any gems and I just took my sweet time? This is... The like, the second level. It's not just hiding behind one of these. Is it? Oh, it totally is. It's a double fault, but that's okay. <laughs> oh, well. I do have one topic, but I'm unfortunately going to keep getting... Uh, if, if you stream Digimon, I, I think Orbital Game Freak Station in for a picture would annihilate you for that. Oh, because, is it because I've got the munch likes as the, the profile uh, that's are on the screen, and then it's just like, oh look, it's Digimon. I've played, the only Digimon game I've played is Digimon World, and then I remember renting way back in the day from, uh, probably Video Easy would have been near me, um, some game... And it was a Digimon game on the PlayStation, but I cannot recall which one it was. But I'm not too sure if it was Digimon World 1. Also, I didn't beat Digimon World 1. I just kind of played it a bit and went, man, this is taking its time. So now we got enough money. Let's give money bags the money. Hello there, Spyro. Name. Would you like to learn to swim underwater? I suppose I could teach you for uh, a small fee. You know, what a generous guy. Teaching a dragon to swim. Also, yeah, I guess... I didn't mention that. The fact Spyro can just touch water now. He doesn't die from water. Great. Okay. When you jump in the water, you can use the D-pad to move around the surface. Use square to dive underwater. When you are underwater, use X to paddle and square to charge. And that's it, basically. Charmander, no, you're gonna die. Oh, exactly. But yeah, no, you can swim underwater and the effect is so good. And in fact, uh, this swimming mechanic is kind of one reason why I really do like this game. Uh, like, it, it provides so much, um, depth, I guess. Is depth the right word to say? It's kind of, uh, okay. Um, but swimming just, you know, it makes the levels seem like they just have so much more going on when there is deep water involved. And that is why, and, and kind of highlighted by, let's go back here. You might have spotted this, and now we can definitely capitalize on it. There's this little patch of water here, which has all these, like, little underwater pots that we can break. I got some more gems in it. And then we got this tunnel, and I love... Ooh, 3D tunnels! I love it. It's so good. I'll blow my mind every time it's like, hey, this game is not designed, like, with a, you know, a top-down topology, but it's like there's actually, like, kind of, you know, secrets and shortcuts and stuff all kind of caked around. It's 3D. I would love, you know, this kind of, like, maze-like structures. And yes, this is how we get this orb just kind of chilling up here. So that's cool. Um, that also puts us as a, at a very nice 200 of the gems. Uh, but let's go into Idle Springs now that, you know, we can swim. Um, so yeah, there's going to be one level later on. I'm going to rush through it and then I'm going to come back because I can get the ability from the next world. Uh, but this is not that level, by the way. <laughs> Imagine it just says typo. This is exactly what we'd all do. Dead. <laughs> Hopes and dreams. Spyro, the idols we were carving have come to life. They've locked us out of our. To be honest, she had a very wooden food. personality. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the the just with this level and holy snap, you're actually required to defeat the enemies. Is, uh, yeah, the, the, the workers, uh, need to be able to unlock the doors. You need to be able to, you know, flame the, the things. I don't know, unlock the 
Uh, there's a bit going on with this uh, intro area. I'm gonna... Uh... Yeah, let, let's, let's delve around here for a bit. Actually, I'm gonna leave these pots for a moment because it's gonna be gem set for in the water soon anyways. Uh, but swim up here, this is, again, it's just like, whoa, secret, whoa! But yeah, with your swimming ability, you can just access so many, you know, weird places all over the place. It's great. I've been locked in here with all our tools, and the giant idol heads won't let the workers Bro, just in swim out. Can solve the three puzzles they've given us. The first puzzle is to turn all these blocks yellow. If you have trouble, come back and talk to me. Okay, real talk. As a kid, this took me forever. As an adult, this seems absolutely trivial. Come over here. Four blocks lit up. You want to light them all up. What switches them? Touching anywhere swaps the adjacent blocks. If that just seems like you touch all the corners, yes, that is exactly the solution. Wow, you could probably really touch all the edges too. That I probably mean, also does it. You could do it. Now, meet me at the pond for the Actually, next challenge. No, I think touching the edges probably undoes them all. Uh, but yeah, no. So, now, it's not as simple as that, just for the orb. You gotta put in a fair bit of work for this orb. Um, he says, meet him by the idol, which is coincidentally just here. He somehow got out. This idol says he's hungry and won't be satisfied until he's swallowed ten fish. He's got a sensitive stomach, so watch what kind of fish you feed him. Now this, this is pain. What you're supposed to do is you're supposed to flame every time there's a fish, but not when there's a red fish, or else he'll throw up three fish. Uh, there is only a set amount of fish in the water, which means as you get later on, you're more likely to get a red one. You kind of have to visualize where all the fish are in the pond and then kind of go, which ones are in the bottom left? And Sparks is constantly wandering around, covering them up, and you're gonna get stuff like that where it's like you flame it, but it's just a bit too late. What? What? Excuse me? That was a super on time one, and then that's a... That's a bad one. <laughs> Oops. Come on, we'll get there. There we go. The most engrossing gameplay right here, but I swear, this, this used to just give me so many headaches as a young wee lad. As a young wee lad who played this game 13 and 14 years ago on this channel. The police are after me, apparently. Jeez. Uh, but yeah. So, uh, I guess let me mention, uh, today's topic of a, of a, of a thing. Everyone likes, uh, technology. Um... So, uh, the topic for this week uh, was something that kind of started to develop maybe five or six days ago, I can't remember. Uh, but there was a hardware unbox video, uh, basically titled 16 gigabytes of VRAM versus 8 gigabytes of VRAM. 6800 XT versus, uh, sorry, not 6800, not the 6800 XT, uh, versus the 3070, um, you know, 2023 Revisited. I think that's what the video was titled. Okay, Spyro, just one more puzzle to go. I'll meet you over by the College Stones for your final challenge. And, uh, the video... Unfortunately, it kind of touts something that Hardware Unboxers said, um, ages ago? And they keep making this point. And I feel like it's, it's more true later on than it was back then. In fact, actually, it really wasn't true back then. And I probably made mention to it. Uh, is that, yeah, 8 gigabytes of VRAM is not enough, according to them. They made the case of, um, the, you know, you're not able to run these games at ultra settings on the 3070. Uh, which games in particular? Well, they said, uh, the new, uh, Last of Us PC port, which I just want to add is apparently running, like, terribly on everyone's computers. Um, the Resident Evil 4 remake, which came out very recently. Finally, Metal Enemies, by the way. Um, the Resident Evil 4 remake, which, for reference, runs fine. It just has, like, the ultra settings are very, very high up. Actually, the ultra settings with ray tracing. Causes the 3070 to crash, runs fine on the 6800. Um, but I would also add, uh, people are finding the ray tracing seems to crash on any hardware, not just the, the 3070. So I wouldn't exactly say, it, you know, it's perfect. 
Those metal shields are making enemies invulnerable to your flame attack. If you press and hold the square button, you can defeat them with your charge attack. Uh, Hogwarts Legacy and Forspoken do this thing where the frame rate looks fine, but in gameplay, uh, the VRAM limit is being hit and the game is basically swapping out textures for low LOD textures, only to then just look really terribly. That, I would say, is a game decision. Obviously, if your game is not aware of how much VRAM is being used, um, it's just going to keep, you know, trying to allocate more and more VRAM until it just gets a memory error and then goes, oh, whoops, I'm crashing, or, oh, whoops, I'm just going to kind of silently continue uh, or release other memory resources so that I can, you know, have these ones. But then it's constantly swapping between releasing and unreleasing, or sorry, releasing and allocating memory, um, you know, just over and over, and that'll lead to frame changes. If the game is super aware of it, it will kind of use this as its way of kind of getting around it. It'll go, hmm. Frame rate hitches are bad, so we've designed a thing that's basically we'll use lower resolution versions of textures when we need to. But unfortunately, <laughs> the algorithms are not picking the best low resolution the textures. They're picking right. the ones that Press you're seeing really easily. Or R2 button. Um, and uh, I think what, what was one other one they showed? I think they showed a Plague Tale Requiem. You will solve the puzzle. I only know what the first one is. It's up to you to figure the rest out. This is the third of the three puzzles, by the way. It's just casually here near the end of the, the level. I guess there's an idol here. Um, he's going to tell you off because you're not standing on the right if one. And uh, to be honest, I'm not 100% sure what indicates what. Like, I would say, okay, that's a blue square with a star in the middle. And this is a green octagon with a star. So I guess we connect to an octagon, and then that's orange with a diamond, so we connect to the next orange thing. And then that's a star with a moon, so we go to the one with the moon. Maybe that's the trick, it's got the one matching element. Genius, I'm a genius. Only thing with this orb, it opens that chest and takes you all the way back to the beginning of the level. Oh, what an insult. Uh... Yeah, he, he said a Plague Tale Requiem, and that kind of has the same issues. Um, I think it had the stuttering... Did it have the stuttering issues? I can't remember off the top of my head, but... Basically, you could boil it down into three camps. Either the port is unoptimized, the optimization is unoptimized, or the game just has settings that go way beyond what people really need to run. Like, whatever is ultra is super overkill. It's crisis mode. It's just like, the, the game's putting it in there, mostly the flex, mostly the future-proof. Um, you know, future-proof as in, hey, we have high-quality assets, and we're gonna let players, you know, be able to turn them on if they're able to. And we kind of expect most people don't have cards with more than 8 gigs of VRAM. And I want to make this as a clear point as well. People then took this video and granted, I guess, the conclusion in the video also took this conclusion, that NVIDIA has engaged in planned obsolescence. Quote a hardware unbox video, not quote a hardware unbox video, but there's a, there's a comment that basically says, what do you think about NVIDIA's planned obsolescence? And they basically kind of agreed with it. I, I, wanna, I wanna be very careful with how I phrase that because uh, someone's gonna say, oh, they didn't actually agree to it. But they did respond to a comment calling it planned obsolescence by kind of saying NVIDIA engages in that practice. I believe that's what they said. Um, Spyro, you're pretty tough. If you ever want a permanent job, we've got a place for you here. But a moment, I want you to have this talisman. Talisman. I love it. This is the third talisman. It is not a T-posing. It is just the same kind of thing that was terrorizing them. Um, so yeah. You gotta be careful not to leave the levels right away. I know there's gonna be one level I'm gonna accidentally walk into the portal at the end. Um, this level's got a, two little nooks and crannies you can go to as well. Um, not really too much, it's mostly... This level was mostly just to, like, fly around and defeat the enemies, but it's got this little waterfall that kind of leads back to, I guess, the second room of the level. Oh, and I just held myself out of there, cool. But I had another path there, and let's, uh, we'll try and visit it. Um, also, how many orbs are in this level? Only two. So, yeah, fewer orbs sometimes. That's okay. Uh, yeah, I'm, okay, I'm gonna be careful with my words on the planned obsolescence thing, because 
just because it was in response to a comment, but it didn't seem like he was denying the claim of plan obsolescence, which would mean that NVIDIA forced, intentionally put 8 gigabytes of VRAM in the card uh, in the 3070 just because, you know, they wanted gamers to buy a new card sooner. I personally saw all these figures and I said, no way are games requiring 8 gigabytes of VRAM right now. And turns out, yeah, every single game in the list that they played can be played on a 1650 Super. Some of them, like The Last of Us, don't really look that good. But some games, like Resident Evil 4, do look good. Resident Evil 4 manages to pull 1080p, um, almost 60 FPS on that balanced setting, on that balanced preset, which is running a lot of settings at medium, and on top of that, medium, you know, nowadays is not medium 10 years ago. Medium nowadays is like, turn down the settings, you know, compared to 4K, which makes sense at 1080p. Love this guy here. Are you allowed to say that nowadays? Oh. I don't know. It's fabulous to see you, Spyro. Now that the supercharged power-up is active, you can charge through the pedestals and send the dancing hula girls over here to help me. Uh, this is a rather weird little challenge, but basically, uh, yeah, supercharging this game is not with a slope with arrows on it, and it is instead with a little wind turbine gate. You gotta supercharge through these things, and they then get launched onto the center platform and then just get knocked back. Your goal is to somehow charge through every single one of these really quickly, like that. I've done this enough times. <laughs> and then uh, they do a little, little chant, a little rain dance. Imagine getting rained on right there. Oh, and then he really dies. <laughs> Look at that. The hula girl's rain dance blew up that idol like a Roman candle. Now I can pursue that dancing career I've dreamed of. Take this orb. It could help you go places. <laughs> okay. All right, sure. Um, and yeah, that's, that's both orbs in this level. Not too tricky. Not too tricky. Uh, but yeah, no, every game can be run on the 6050 Super, and a number of them still look fine, actually. Um, and the 1650 Super I highlight because even though it is a powerful, it is a rather powerful card for the price that it did go for, I did kind of like it, but it most notably only has 4 gigabytes of VRAM. Um, so what gives? Well, people's, like, is 8 gigabytes of VRAM enough? Is 4 gigabytes not enough? You could make the case, oh, but the 3070 is not a an entry-level card like the 1650 Super is. Yes. I would then say, are we in this kind of awkward middle ground period where suddenly games now need the VRAM, but they're getting a bit hitched? And in the past, yeah, games used to be able to run with less VRAM and still look as good. And in the future, games will require more and more VRAM and eventually get to the point where they run like trash on both of these cards. We're just in that middle ground where the games may run well. By the way, stand up here, that's, a, that's skill point number two. Probably get like you know, an even number of skill points. Uh, actually, I think there's more skill points in the. I don't know if there's any skill points in the second, in the third world. Maybe there's like two or three, but there's a remarkably low number of skill points. Um, oh, <laughs> whoops. There's a little bit more to explore on the level as well. Um, but yeah, like the fact that these games can run on a card with four gigabytes of VRAM should be like, hey, yeah. You don't need 4 gigabytes of VRAM. I think the problem is just that there are some things where you can't max out the settings like we used to. We're getting to that point where games are requiring all this VRAM. To me, I don't see the reason why. I don't think these games are exactly looking better, like, just all of a sudden. I don't think the Resident Evil 4 remake particularly looks better than uh, maybe a game from 2022 that looks really good. Um, but the one catch I want to say is that almost all of these games are not available on both last-gen systems. I think only one of them was. It was Rocket Go. And then it crashes right there. I want to make sure you grab all the, the gems up here. And that's why I, I uh, left the gems in the water until later. Or, the, or actually, maybe I didn't. Uh, but yeah. 
That's, what's that? That's this level? Let's go to the exit. Um... But yeah, I, I like, just just for note, The Last of Us uh, Remake or Remaster, that's on uh, PS5 only and now PC. Uh, Hogwarts Legacy had a delayed PS4 and Xbox One release. Uh, Resident Evil 4 is not on the Xbox One, it's on the PS4, and it's on the Series S and X, and not the Xbox One, which is interesting. Um, definitely, I can start thinking that these games are now prioritizing the next-gen systems or the current-gen systems so much that, you know, that, you know, their highest-end specs or even their lower parts of specs now suddenly require much more memory just because they haven't been optimizing it as much. Yeah! <sighs> Amazing. Um, and, uh, and I'm not a big fan of how suddenly this, how sudden this jump was. And I also want to say, like, some people also go, oh, well, the PS5 can support 12 gigs of VRAM. There's a big asterisk on all of this. Both the Xbox Series S and X and the PS5 operate under a, uh, a shared graphics memory, um, pool. Or, or a shared memory pool, I guess. They... They all have 16 gigabytes, or in the Series S's case, uh, 10 gigabytes, of memory that needs to be shared by the operating system, the, um, I guess, the, the RAM itself, the, the logical memory. Logical? Logical's not the right word. Um, but just like, you know, your typical memory. And then the video memory, which on PCs is usually delegated off and sent to the graphics card. Uh, there can be things where it's like, oh, well, if I just load a texture, the texture is loaded. I don't need to have a texture in video memory as well as system memory. There's a bit of optimization that can be done for that. But the general rule is, I guess, is that, like, your game, you know, technically doesn't need that texture in software, in your software memory as well. It just kind of needs it in, um, in the video, in the video memory. Uh, that is 16 gigabytes that you are only allowed to, well on your way, you know, work with. And even then, I think the operating system does take either two and a half gigs, on. something like that, on the PS5. That only gives you 12 and a half oh, gigs to do both the game and the video orbs, memory. Too. The professor thinks they will help you get back to the dragon world. Oh yeah, there are some barriers. There are a couple barriers that you Your need enough orbs. Your game camera is currently in passive mode. This mode requires you to control the camera yourself and moves more slowly. If you like, I can change the game camera to use active mode. Active in mode. active mode, the camera moves much faster. Wow. Uh, no, I'm good. I used to be an active mode kind of guy, and uh, I'm getting used to just like manually, you know, moving the camera when I want it to. Uh, yeah. Now here's a ladder. This is gonna be my my death knell. I saw something shiny at the top of this wall. You could probably get it, but you'll have to learn how to climb first. Just teasing me. Uh, yeah. There's actually there's two levels just chilling right here as well. Um, so we got Sunny Beach and Horikos. I'm gonna go into Sunny Beach first. Sunny Beach is the level that you cannot get everything in uh, until you've got the climb ability. I'm gonna, you know, cruise through this level. I'm gonna completely just go for it. Um, when you replay a level, basically everything just resets except the gems aren't there um, and any orbs you get. Um, so I'm gonna generally, you know, just kind of clear this level. We get the talisman and we leave. Because you need the talisman in order to keep going. So these turtles, I love them. Uh, but I'm going to casually ignore what the guy says. Because we're going to... I'm going to properly do this level, you know, later. Later this stream. Uh, but basically your goal in this level is to guide the little turtles to the end. Uh, this just involves going through and... Claiming these big turtles so they open the gates. There's one ladder. There's actually two ladders as well. <laughs> These enemies are kind of fun. You gotta flame twice. Once to break the inner tube. And so get past them, so. uh, but yeah, at the, at the end of the day, I don't think that there's really enough of a case to say that all games are going to require that much video memory. I could see games doing that. I don't think it is really appropriate, especially because, and, and I, I, I alluded to this, I'm gonna harken on this. How many video cards actually have more than eight gigs of VRAM? The 3070, you could make the argument, 
is not quite a high amount. And maybe some people and some... Oh, by the way, it's the end of the level already. Thank you. We're going to hear this guy later. He's going to give us a talisman again. Don't worry. Um, it gives you a talisman with a turtle on it. What a fun level. You could actually probably blitz through a lot of these levels without really getting much stuff. But you're going to get a bit caught out by the end of the game because you do need 50 of the orbs. So, that's a lot of work. Amazing. Um, but, yeah. Yeah, you can make the case that the 3070 and the 3070 Ti should have had more memory on them. Um, the 3080 still only has 10 gigabytes of, of memory. The 3080 Ti and the 3080 12 gig have 12, 12 gigabytes, I guess, in the name. And the, 30, the, the 3090 and the 3090 Ti have 24. Now, 24 is a large number. And in fact, no consumer graphics card has had more than 24 gigs. The 3090 being the first. The 3090 Ti just be, basically being a refresh of that. Um, also, yeah, let's go into Harukai's while I'm at it. I can do Harukai's, so we're going we're gonna to do Harukai's. Um... Uh, and now for the newer generation of NVIDIA cards, the 4070, which just came out like a couple of days ago, the 4070 Ti, they both have 12 gigs, the 4080 has 16, and the 4090 has 24 again, and in fact it's actually the same memory, I think, as the, um, 3090 Ti. Uh, on AMD side, the only cards that have more are the Radeon 7 from when, um, the 1080 Ti competitor was basically a thing, uh, and this is, uh, it's got 16 gigs, I believe. Does that have HPM? Does it have HPM memory? We've always had trouble with the gear grinders, but now they've set up force fields to separate us. If you can find diodes, you can use them to turn off the force fields. Uh, unfortunately, Tom Kenny's voice is very obvious I with this guy. I think there's a diode around here somewhere, but my eyesight isn't what it used to be. I'm gonna double check if the, the Radeon 7 had HPM. I don't believe it did. But I'm just going to double check. List of Wikipedia. Radeon. It. Oh, it did have HPM. Yeah, it did. Yeah. What a strange, like, kind of period where AMD really. And I, I kind of said this. I said, like, AMD back then did have slower memory, and that was kind of, you know, I think something that did hinder their, their graphics performance a bit as they scale into higher resolutions. Uh, by the way, these wooden windmills don't do anything, but uh, there's a skill point associated to get them all. Um, now, the Vega 56 and the Vega 64, they didn't have more than 8 gigs of VRAM. They both had, uh, they both had 8 gigs. Even the Vega 64 Liquid, a later variant. Uh, by the way, this level, yeah, you collect these little diodes, these little white things. And you'll be collecting them because they're basically your keys to unlock the gates. Look at that, a thousand gems already. I'm trying to think off the top of my head how many gems are in this game. I think there's only 10,000. It's actually a bit of a lower amount than you'd expect. But I think it's just because there's too many levels with 400 as the limit. So, in fact, every level is 400, so that makes sense. Um, and then the only other AMD graphics cards with more than 8 gigs of VRAM are all the uh, the the Radeon, the RDNA 2 graphics cards from 2020 onwards. In fact, mid-2020 onwards. Or late 2020 onwards. This is graphics cards that are, at most, Two and a half years old, and the entire line wasn't two and a half years old. Some of the line was released later. Remember, they came out with the 6800 and the 6800 XT and the 6900 XT, and then they backfilled the rest. Um, the 6600 XT, uh, which is a 3060... Maybe a... Uh, it's not quite a 3060 Ti competitor, it's kind of in there. That's got eight gigs. Um, Oh, and oh, I should also mention the 3060 has 12 gigs. But not all 3060s, they're releasing 8 gig variants, and they're kind of... It's spooky. All these robots, and they're just... And they're just... Kaboom. These big guys, I'll tell you that, they get me all the time. Um... There's diodes everywhere. 
But yeah, that does mean that there's, you know, a number of AMD graphics cards, but I want to specifically note that not a lot of people got the Radeon 7, mostly because it was, you know, a super high-end enthusiast card. And the 6700 XT, or the 6700 as well, like, yeah, they're much more entry-level, but they are also recent. A lot of people are rocking RDNA 1 graphics cards, and the highest one, the 5700 XT, only had 8 gigs of VRAM. Anyone on uh, Turing, so uh, NVIDIA RTX 2000, by the way, this is a, this is a little side area over here, but uh, this minigame gave me so many nightmares. Oh, these gear grinder thieves keep taking our lightning stones. If you can replace them all and activate our generator, I'd be very grateful. I love this just ambience as well, this like, I guess this like synth drum sound, it's just like very clean and kind of down mix, uh, down mix guitar, uh, that is, I don't know what that like, like kind of sound effect is in the back, but I want to say it's royalty free because I think I've heard it in more songs than just this one, uh, and then coupled with just this rain, which does indeed do puddles when it hits the ground, how cool is that? And, uh, just this kind of dithered sky pattern. It's such a vibe. I would sleep here, man. Um, so this minigame, you just kind of spit up the orbs and you pop them, put them on the, the bits with the, the little pincer things. Uh, but you might think, why is my target ten kind of gorilla guys? And, uh, that's because, uh, at some point, you know, all hell breaks loose. Uh, it has not broken loose yet. When is it gonna break loose? I'm pretty sure the minigame technically, you know, clears itself once you've, uh... Yeah, there we go. <laughs> so you, you've probably heard a bit of a phew, and that's, uh, that's cause they, they deactivated some across the level. There's only so many of them, so one, you know, you don't have to exactly, like, pressure yourself to get them, but, you know, again, I'm gonna walk up here and they're just gonna be chilling with the orbs, and I'm gonna need to just get them. They, they've run away! What are they doing? Oh, I know exactly what they're doing. Sometimes you can catch them in the mix as well. Look at that guy. Sometimes you're right there. A lot of times it's just like, yep, I'm running back and forth, I'm constantly defeating them, and then I'm gonna have to get the orbs and pop them back. Um... <laughs> but yeah, I want to know that, the, just, yeah, there's, like, some people are saying, oh, you know, 8 gigabytes is not enough, but it kind of was the de facto standard, and something that AMD actually pushed for the longest time, and then they retracted the blog post once they released the 6500 XT, a card with 4 gigs of VRAM, because everything during COVID was super expensive. That was just, that was just the thing. And I can, I get why companies corner cut back then. And I wasn't, I'm not the biggest fan of the 6500 XT. Oh, I thought I could get this guy. He's making a runner. Whoop. Oh, that jump. That jump. Oh, he's going. He's going. Where's he going? He went somewhere. I don't know. We'll find him. Oh, that's what I heard him. It's <laughs> just the drums and the music. Um, so, yeah, moral of the story is there's lots of graphics cards that don't have that much memory. I also just want to add, I mentioned the, the Xbox Series S. It's only got 10 gigs of memory that it has to use for everything. And every single one of these games, at least for the time being, still is supported on the Series S. You could say, oh, but they've got the graphics turned down. Exactly. Turn down the graphics. If you're having this problem with your VRAM, turn down the graphics. If you cannot play the game, or the game looks like trash, refund it. Don't play the game. If you're un if you're unhappy with the graphics of a game, or you're unhappy with the performance of a game, don't give them your money. Stop playing these games brand new just because. Like, you don't need to play brand new games. There are so many good games out there, and you don't need to play brand new games, and especially games that are unoptimized. It's so much better, and I will 100% guarantee this, it is so much better to just play games when, you, when your hardware is, one, a bit more affordable, and two, super capable. That's why I really enjoyed playing a bunch of games on, the, on my 1080 Ti once RTX started being a thing, because 
ray tracing, even in its first, like, kind of advent, was just, eh, you know, the, the benefits were there, but I just don't think it really was selling me when it came to, like, a game experience. There we go. Just a bit of attrition. You'll you'll win this mini game. Thank you, Spyro. I found this shiny thing mixed up with our lightning stones. Please take it as a reward. I want to know what an electrol is. If I had no taste, I would say, "Oh, it's someone who goes on anonymous message boards." But like, I've met nice people on anonymous message boards. I ain't I ain't ripping into them like that. I know so many mean people who, who like put their face on everything. I'm like, bro, you got some guts, but like, oh boy, you know. You being nice or not has nothing to do with your anonymity on the internet. <laughs> you know what I mean? There are some people like that. They're just like, oh. Like, they, they're they so nice when they're anonymous because they have to work for it. But then it's like, oh, it's just some people. I don't know. Um, I love these, like, platforms constantly, like, sticking out, in and out. And I really love the vibe of this level. This is, like... I'd argue it's my second favorite level of the first time. They wind them up, and then away they go. I love them. I keep missing them every time. There's a lot of uh, enemies in this level as well. 22, 22. And I'd say this level kind of goes on for a bit, doesn't it? I feel like I probably like cleared off levels in the first game so much quicker though. Like when I did my stream of the first game, I was probably like definitely certain I did like two streams that were just shy of two hours, I think. I think the second one was a little over, but not too much. So obviously there's a bit more level, but uh, let's chill inside. And I love that the rain is strictly outside. They properly do the rain outside, and it doesn't apply inside. There's a very cool effect. You know one thing I'll rip on for the graphics? Thank you, well, Spyro. You, you probably can't notice it right now. all of the electric barriers. We've been guarding this talisman from the gear grinders. Please, take it as a reward. And now take it as a... I can't believe my Tom kind of impression. Yeah, this talisman, it's a gear. I hate the gear grinders, but they made their talisman a gear. Um, you might notice it right now, uh, the game has uh, its pillar box that kind of killed a little bit of the top and bottom of the screen. I think they kind of do it just to save a little bit of performance. Um, so yeah. Now with that many enemies defeated, uh, you might notice there's a big chest over there, big windmill, and a supercharge. You can use the supercharge to destroy the big chest, but also, super importantly, you can use the supercharge to destroy these fans. And they all reveal a button behind them. While technically possible without destroying these buttons. Nah, destroy the buttons. Or, or hit the buttons. It'll make this whole bit uh, so much easier. I love these gears on top of the, the environments as well. There's just something so comfy about this. Now you're gonna need to drive the supercharge and then run into these windmills over on the side. And there's, a, there's just one more, it's in view. This one's kind of kind of a blind hit as well. You're gonna see it in action, you're gonna be like, wow! That's what they require for a first world uh, level. Ready? Just hold right. Okay, that that worked, but it, it didn't didn't quite go as smoothly as I expected because the camera got stuck. But it worked. Spyro, do you see that big building over there? The gear grinders are using it to steal our electricity. Please help us by shutting down the machinery inside. So, uh, this one's pretty straightforward. It's just gliding over to the destination, but it's a bunch of jumps. And, uh, all these fans that I jump on, these ones, these are the ones that I slowed down. So, if you hadn't slowed them down, these jumps would just be like, oh, okay. And interestingly, it looks almost like you can go over this direction, but then it's like, oh, there's a bit of a jump there. But I like how this is on top of, you know, where you... Uh, and, and again, with the uh, the three-dimensional geometry. It's like some of these are like, oh, I'm going you know, on top or in high locations compared to places I was before. 
Spyro, you've done it's well. It's a different so electrol, I swear. You can have this little trinket for good luck. If you have any questions about shutting down the factory, just ask me. How nice of him. A midway challenge orb. The next glides get tricky. You'll have to use your hover maneuver to make them. Press the triangle button during a glide to hover and get extra height. I don't think you necessarily Remember need extra height. I think you just need you like very close to the windmill you know, or you won't make it. Precise jumping. Which is what the the, the hover is kind of for. Oh. And that's prob that's exactly it. It's like, yeah. The hover doesn't actually save you there. Um, very fortunately as well, it's got a little windmill. Or, or a whirlwind, so you don't have to... You know, you can botch up a couple of these jumps. But you do have to go a fair bit. Shall now proceed to do the rest of this part without hovering. I think you'll need the hover for some of these jumps, though. So. I just love that you go on top of everything here, though. Uh, also, just to note, uh, you know how I was destroying all these windmills? That was the last wooden windmill. I believe they all come back if you die. And that's really annoying, but that's the only one that's like really on a high ledge. Everything else is basically ground level. We should be able to get that easy. Spyro, help! The switch to turn off the gear grinder factory is in that room, but, um, it's awfully noisy in there. I used to be terrified of this whole bit as a kid. I don't know exactly how. It's not even that noisy, but... Bonk. It just turns off. Easy. Thanks for shutting down the factory. Here, I found this stuck between the gears. You can have it if you want. There's just orbs everywhere. Who put them there? Uh, but yeah. So, anyway, moral of the story is... Don't be... Well, I guess... How about, how about, let me just epilogue the story. Uh, so point is, a lot of people saw the Hardware Unbox video and started saying 8 gigabytes is not enough, see this video makes the case. And they kind of ignored that the second half of the video does show a lot of games where the 3700 trades, sorry, the, the 3070 trades blows with the 6800. You know, they're back and forth, but they're both doing well and they're both doing much better than people expect. But it's just a handful of these newer titles, and strictly newer titles, they all came out in the last six months, that just don't do that well. Um, could it could it be because of VRAM? Uh, probably in a lot of those cases, yes. Although I would argue The Last of Us is a trash performer overall. Um, so here we go, through here, up the steps. This is the other thing, you'll need enough orbs because Nice work, All of these Spiro. speedway levels the require. Activated this special portal. Well, you won't I think find three of them require the orbs, and one of them you need to pay for with fast, gems. You'll get lots of treasure. Have fun. The speedway levels are just the flight levels from the first game, but they got a little bit more to them. But there's only four of them in this game, as opposed to six in the uh, in the first game. So, uh, like all the speedway levels, you just go in and you do them. Also, I believe there is a, uh, a skill point in all four speedways for doing them in a certain amount of time. So I'm going to see if I can try and do them as quickly as I possibly can. Ugh. Oh, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not having a good go at this. I'm gonna get it, I swear. Um, but yeah, no, people people were very adamant of defending this opinion that isn't actually like the whole point even in the entire video. Uh, although I guess it is in the thumbnail of the video that the, and the title of the video that the VRAM is apparently a major point between the two cards. Um, but I would kind of say it's just in this particular price point does NVIDIA have a card with much lower VRAM. Alright, now here's the kind of weird part. Uh, oh boy. Uh, I don't know if I necessarily got this right. So yeah, like like, uh, like the flights in the first game, it's basically 
you, f you fly through or flame all the objects and uh, you get time back and you gotta not run out of time. I'm missing one arch. I Because I'm doing this in a kind of weird order. This is probably not how exactly you meant to do it. Listen, as long as I can beat it, then I can kind of optimize my strat. Again, you'll hear the, the if I if I got enough time, but I don't think I did. I think the time I need is one minute ten. So let's do it a bit quicker now. I'm pretty sure this start is definitely the fastest thing to do here. Uh, but yeah, so get all the things in in one go. Sorry, get get all the the you know the objects in one go, and you max out your money at four hundred in this. Uh, I may also add, every speedway level has an orb in it. Oh. Not doing, not doing the best job of getting the skill point. Maybe I should just go for one of the closer guys? Like this guy first? One minute ten, one minute ten. Let's see, here we go, here we go, here we go. I feel like me having to go back around for the rings is probably not, like, it doesn't feel time efficient, but the the times aren't too strict, like, once you're able to kind of, like, do one part of it quickly, it's not too bad. As long as I can get that in the next... there you go. It's good enough, it's good enough. 69 seconds, heck yeah. Now I'm gonna retry. Every level has an, has, every speedway level has an orb in it. You need to find out where you get the orb. And uh, really interestingly, you just gotta know that you gotta go over here and this lady you can talk to. I guess now you think you're pretty good. But only after, well, only after you get, you get all the gems. That's champion. important. All right, Spyro, meet the course champion. In order to win the race, you must fly through all the rings. Beware if Hunter flies through a ring first. The ring will start to shrink. Uh, Hunter? Uh, Hunter? And that's right, uh, Hunter's the course champion right here. He flies through the rings and the rings start shrinking. You can technically fly through the uh, arches and flame the other stuff, but the rings are what you need. Uh, you can technically fly through the rings in any order, but if you, if you break from Hunter's path, the rings that he's going through will probably close before you get to them. So it's better to just follow him around. It's not too bad, but he does go on a bit of a wild path. Especially because when he goes downhill, it's just like, oh, Trying to follow him. Maybe it's because I'm a lot more used to flying around in 3D space. And I've played this game 50 million times before. <laughs> um, so, but yeah, no. So, anyway, people on the internet started following, telling the opinion, and then... I started seeing the worst. I started seeing people say, if eight gigs is not good now, or like is not enough now to play games, will 12 gigs not be enough in a year or two? And I'm like, what? Like what, one, what is the basis for games actually needing more video memory without necessarily looking better? That is a big like thing we need to keep pointing it's out jobs, is going, Spyro. That the games need to look better in order to justify the increase in demands. And right now, it's like, it just seems like we're replacing tech with newer tech that can look better, but when you're not toning it up, when you're trying to keep the, the graphics level fixed, it's just using more memory. When you keep the memory level fixed, it looks worse. We're doing these more dynamic systems without exactly having the fallback case that kind of does the job. Um, 
So I would highly say the game devs need to be on this. They need to really, like, you know, not leave most hardware people out of the, you know, out there if 8 gigs is apparently the limit. I love this as well, by the way. You can see, ah, uh, okay, how do I do this? And this, was, this one's a bit crafty. You gotta know that you jump from one window to the next window. Wow. Wonderful. Wonderful secret. 15 orbs. Let's drop down. The money bags managed to get all the way over, over here. Somehow. Say, Spyro, you see this wall here? I bet you're dying to know what's on I the other dying. side. We're all if dying at different rates, money bags. I might be able to remember how to lower the wall. And yeah, he costs 400 gems. You're going to get 400 gems for doing this level. Hmm. Yes, the sparkling beauty of those gems seems to have jarred my memory. But it's required because it's a level on the inside. You're going to and and all he did was he lowered the wall. You're going to generally feel this that money bags might be stinging you out a bit of cash. Just just maybe. Just, just maybe. I love this, like, you know, this walled garden. Like, what, what is this vibe here? But it's very pretty. Anyways, uh, this is actually my favorite level in the whole game. Aquaria Towers. And uh, why is it my favorite level? Uh, because uh, literally uh, starving dolphins. Seahorses, sorry. No, not dolphins. <laughs> It's not even funny. The funny looking guys with the shock but they sticks sound funny. have drained all our water. We can't get it back unless someone activates the switches they're guarding. So the gimmick with this level, and I love it, is that there's all these switches all over the level and they you know, pour a bunch of water into the level and suddenly now there's a raised water level. And the seahorse here is a bit more happier once he's you know out of the water. The shock stick guys are tough. Yesterday they turned Vern, our giant squid, into fried calamari. Oh my goodness. Uh, but also it kind of means that the level suddenly has a different dynamic. And as I said, like swimming is fairly different in this game. You're running around through some of the level and then suddenly now you gotta swim through it. I love this kind of mechanic. And I think this level just takes it to the nth degree. This is exactly what I want out of, you know, a swimming level. This is one of the best water levels. And actually, I remember all the discussions of, like, people saying, Oh, I hate water levels in video games, or swamp levels. And I would just say, this is my example of a water level that works. Mostly because you get a lot of, like, active control over Spyro as he's, like, you know, swimming around. You just kind of point in the direction you want to go in, and then you hold square or X and you just go. These crabs just... You know, vaporize them, let their eyes fall off their bodies. Oh my goodness, jeez. Uh, but yeah, yeah. But also, yeah, what does the Reddit commenter know that no one else knows? What makes them think that the games are going to keep demanding more and more video memory? What my theory is, and I really, really hope I'm right on this one, is that hopefully a lot of games keep four gigabytes as their minimum, or even lower. And as long as you can scale the graphics up, you can keep scaling them up. I'm okay with as high a setting as you want. Make ultra setting take 24 gigabytes, or even more. Ultra setting shouldn't necessarily be something that's achievable. The ultra setting should be what the absolute best thing the, the developers can make something like. And if that's impossible to do right now, that's fine, just as long as you're kind of clear about it. Because a lot of reviewers, like Hardware Unbox, are going to test your games at Ultra and then complain that they use so much video memory when it's Ultra. They did not compare visual fidelity at all unless it was highlighting popping textures or, or low quality textures. I would definitely say the low quality textures things is not ideal, but I would also say, hey, if Hardware Unbox were told Yes, like, we we expect these to be like Halo settings. We expect these to be settings that are not very achievable. And yeah, you're going to find cards, you know, 
have something that causes them to suffer. Hi, Spyro. You must be tougher than you look to get here. All the same, you won't be able to get past the metal sharks up ahead. Oh, I metal sharks is green. I my submarine, though. For a modest fee, of course. And he's got a submarine here. A pleasure doing business with you, Spyro. This submarine is 100% shark proof. I guarantee it. So I love how you spend 400 gems in order to get into this level. And another 100 gems. Just to ride this shark submarine. With the little radioactive fins. And all the submarine gets you through is through the shark bit. And yes, you probably will die in the shark bit. I, I love how the game also moves you over there. I barely see anything. The camera is like trying to figure itself out right there. Hit the button. This is another thing I kind of like about, um, I guess like Spyro 1 has levels similar to this as well. I guess both games have very similar level design, probably because uh, they made three games in three years. Uh, but I love how this is back in the first room, but you're just up the ledge. Our world is wet again. We all want you to have this talisman of Aquaria Towers to remember us by. And that's it, that's the level, but it's it's this fun kind of just romp around where you turn on the water and you start swimming in areas that, you know, you weren't swimming in before. To the point that now the end of the the end of the level involves the entire level being flooded. Now yes, there was a flame power up, but the most cool thing I love is that where do we go now? Because there's obviously every level has done this so far. When you finish a level, there's got to be somewhere that you can go that you couldn't have gotten to before. But just, you know, past the end of the level. It is up in the ceiling and suddenly you go up and it's like, whoa, the actual towers of Aquaria Towers. It's not the largest space in the world. It probably covers just as much ground as the actual level, but it's so like cool how it's just like this whole second half of this level that wasn't there when you just got to the talisman. And like some of the other levels, it's like, yeah, okay, you know, you got the hockey race, you know, something simple. The water so workers the hockey, have kidnapped uh, six match. of my children and hidden them in the tops of these numbered This guy's towers. reading a I ransom borrowed note. some explosives to blast the doors off the towers. And then he borrowed explosives. <laughs> if you can make it to the top of the six numbered towers, my children will be safe. So, uh, yeah, this, uh, this mission's a bit terrifying, but yeah, the towers are numbered, one through six. You gotta go in, and they all got a bit of lightning. Just swim up to the top. And then the next one blows up and do it six times and you're good. Two of the towers are up in this top area. Uh, wherever tower two, oh, where was tower two? I swear I saw it, oh there it is. But the lightning is a bit more challenging each time. So, yeah, moral of the story is, uh, what, what I'd say is, yeah, game devs, uh, Please keep supporting weaker graphics cards, especially when so many people bought 1060s and 2060s rather recently. Uh, even though Nvidia hasn't actually made a card with less than 8GB of VRAM in the past generation, they released quite a bunch that did have 8GB. I would even say that, yeah, you probably should be, as a game developer, you should kind of keep in mind maybe 6 years of hardware, at the very least. We don't want another Doom 3 moment where you support only graphics cards from the last 3 years as your minimum. And gra granted, graphics technology back then worked real fast, but Doom 3 had no alternative. It didn't have a DirectX, you know, 9 mode and a DirectX 8 mode. It was like, no, your graphics cards had to support DirectX 9, 9.0b, uh, or else this game was just not running. And it preferably needed to have uh, 64 megs of RAM on it. Um, that being said, you know, what did people do in response to Doom 3? They either waited, or they bought a new graphics card. And obviously, you know, maybe, maybe NVIDIA does want that. I've been trying to tame my new pet manta ray, but he just won't obey me. Hey, you're just about the right size to ride on his back. Great. Hop on his back and guide him through each of the rings of bubbles as it appears. And remember, he's brand new, so try not to get him dented or scratched up. As a kid, I did not understand what he meant by that, but it's clearly a joke. One weird thing about this is that if you touch the the ring of bubbles, it apparently doesn't count. Uh, it also uh, letterboxes the video even more than it was before, by the way. Yes, that is 
ultra, ultra wide screen. Is it because of the bubbles? It might be because of the bubbles. Well done. I suppose I owe you something for that. I like how, Take you know, Spyro and that seahorse was also just emitting bubbles all the time, although uh, Hunter seems content holding his breath until eternity. Also, you tell me you had an orb in your now flipper. Now manta ray's tamed, I'd love to get him into racing shape. Care to take him through a harder course? Classic okay. two-stage orbs, luck. though. But I love how, again, this is the only time there's the Manta Ray challenge in the whole game. And they kind of just go, hey, if we've got a cool mechanic, let's use it twice like this. And that's it. That's that's the whole mechanic. There's going to be so many, like, mechanics in the game where it's just like, yep, that's that's the moment. That's, that's the only time in the game you ever use it. Kind of reminds me of uh, the last level. We got the Superman 64 a couple of levels in a row now. Incredible. You've got real talent. I could use a partner like you. You can have the orb I found in my <laughs> other not flipper too. Sure oh, he had two, two orbs in both flippers? Listen, we don't know the stakes of the orbs, but trust me, when you figure out, you know, what the orbs were meant to be doing to begin with, it's just like, wow. And he had two in his flippers. And he only realized them now until he made me do his dirty work. Dang it, Hunter. Dang it. Um, so yeah, moral of the story is, uh, game devs don't leave out people with low VRAM requirements. I don't care what you do for Ultra. Uh, video game reviewers don't care what game devs do with Ultra. Benchmark something, benchmark something realistic, and just kind of say, that's my realistic case. Uh, and I left a joke on the how about try man about the double joke. Oh, yeah! <laughs> I mean, now we're in the water section, so here, here's the thing, you get the, the, the super flame power-up, which underwater, actually, well, also, I guess we haven't even seen the super flame power-up, but, uh, but yeah, you can just spit underwater and destroy these sharks. You don't have to destroy the sharks, but you kind of have to if you want to be able to, <laughs> if you want to be able to pick up these gems in peace. Uh, there's actually two uses of, uh, Stuff. Also, we couldn't have gotten up here. This is a classic gem I would always miss. I always keep remembering I'm gonna pick up those gems. Sharks, RTX on! Uh, funny that you mention RTX on because uh, I'm having a huge rant about uh, the hardware unboxed uh, 8 gigabytes of VRAM uh, discussion. But yeah, moral of the story is game devs don't rule, don't leave out people who only have 4 gigs of VRAM. Uh, reviewers, be realistic with how like how games look. Lots of these shots as well, so I'm gonna take another stab. There we go. And that's all the shots. But yeah, you use the super flame once you've gone through the level to just like wreck the sharks and then go, hmm. And the worst part is I'm pretty sure once you've gotten the talisman, uh money bags is not there anymore. You can't get a refund. No refunds from him. Uh so where, so the only thing we need is the towers 3 and 4 and 5 and 6. So here is 3. Right back at the beginning level, it has a crab. You can kill the crab. Um, and then, yeah, Reddit community, don't feel you have to buy the newest graphics cards or even play the most newest games. Reviewers should be catering to your needs. If you don't play the games that they review, the review is not as crazy relevant to you as like maybe it should be if anything lots of reviews are heavily biased towards newer games all the time and you could say oh well maybe games aren't like you know they run fine on older hardware sorry they run fine on newer hardware to the point that the benchmark is kind of worthless and to that i would say yeah like the whole point of is a graphics card better than another graphics card isn't as relevant when the games run fine and it's only when the games are not running fine, which is really, really only when they're running new games. I would, I would then just say, you know, if, if a game is so exceeding the capabilities of the cards at the time, you shouldn't feel like you have to buy into that. You can, you can easily just ignore games that are on all sides. Oh, Snappy is still here! I think he asked you for another ride. Up aboard, Spyro! Okay, he just asked you for another ride. Uh, 
So yeah, it's a trifecta of, of problems, basically. It's, it's not even a double fault, it's a triple fault. The game devs need to be more uh, more optimized. The, the reviewers need to be more... I love how I'm jumping out of the I think it's a bit weird. The reviewers need to be more, you know, open about, like, how meaningful Ultra even is. This one's the trickiest one, because I usually touch it. He's gonna walk along with it, it's tricky. You got poured on optimization parts of the so toothbrush takes 500 megabytes of RAM. You did it! Now oh. we can swim in peace. I heard that you were collecting these orbs. Please take this one. Uh, yeah, yeah. The, the whole problem does stem a bit from how game devs uh, have just kind of... They've done, done some new techniques for, for graphics that just consume VRAM. They consume the video memory so hard. Uh, and they're a bit unjustifiable. It's like games are using double to quadruple, even sextuple, like there are games hitting 24 gigs of VRAM when you think they, you know, aren't really looking tremendously better than games from before. Is it the ray tracing? A little bit. Oh, the bubbles at the bottom. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> But yeah, lots of lots of stuff. Uh, and worst case, worst part, it drowned out the conversation about the 4070 because the 4070 came out uh, a couple of days ago. Oh. Well done, Spyro. Now that you have six talismans, this door will open. Wow. Okay, Spyro, jump through that hole in the floor to get down to Crush's dungeon. I'll help you by tossing sheep through the hole if I can catch them. Good luck. Okay. Sure. Down the hall. Before you get to the castle dungeon, Spyro, I thought that you might want to know how Ripto and his monsters arrived in Avalar. You see, last week in the Winter Tundra, the professor was working on some new super portal technology. There. That's the last orb in place. Now let's see. All we need are some coordinates. Yeah, how about 22475? <laughs> That's my birthday. I feel like I've quoted the 22475 before. No, Hunter, don't! What? I don't completely <laughs> ignore the skill point in Quarry Towers. I think I did. I'll go back to it. I'll do it. I'll go back to it the stream. Don't worry. Get off me, you useless buffoons! Why can't either? Where are we? Hmm. No dragons. Wonderful. Crush! Go back and pack my bags. We're moving in. Say hello to your new king. Professor, shut it down. Hurry! Oh my, oh my, I can't see the switch. I think I've broken my glasses. Oh my goodness. Crush, go through the portal, you idiot. To all your friends to take the orbs I feel bad for Crush. Quickly. He gets picked on this whole intro bit. No! Go! Crush, get the orbs now! Despicable little creature! I'll kill you! This is bad news for Avalar. Hunter, why didn't you chase him? Uh, yeah, I uh, would have gone after him. But didn't he say something about not liking dragons? Professor, could we catch a dragon to help us? Yes, yes, I think so. We'll need a world that has an alignment much better suited to intercepting one of these creatures. How about Glimmer? Good idea. We better go right now. So uh, yeah, that, that's kind of just like that. Oh yeah, quick, we gotta explain like why these characters came out of nowhere. Um, but here's the first boss. It is uh, we're a fighting crush. What he does is he does a. I always refer to this as the generic ground pound. Every time someone jumps and it creates a shockwave. Uh, what you want to do is you want to just give him a flame right after he's done with an attack. Kind of leave a bit because uh. Oh, there's a couple of rocks to fall down from the ceiling. Do that seven times and you win. I love how his little picture in the bottom left uh, blinks. 
cool is that? Bit of quality, bit of character. Uh, after you hit him twice, now they're red. Duh. And he basically spits a fireball. So instead of jumping, you want to charge past him. Not too bad. Let's see if you can do that again. Try not to stand too close, but I like swap swapping the direction I go in because then I'm usually kind of going the right way. Now with three health left, uh, 50-50, but they're a bit quicker this time. And he does uh, three hits. Same thing with the fire as well. He also chases you, so you gotta start sprinting way away. You might not stand on a red one. Oh, here he comes, here he comes, here he comes. Oh, he's probably going to stand on a red one standing there. There he goes. And there we go. <laughs> Ooga Booga, exactly. Uh, run away one last time, and there you go. Also, if you don't get hit... Look at that, a skill point! So, uh, yeah, out of 16 skill points, three of them are all just beating the bosses without taking a hit. That is probably uh, easier said than done uh, for the second and third bosses. I will try my best for the second boss. I cannot guarantee the third boss. It's a little bit of a secret. Bring it on, shorty. What an evil thing to do to snortle. Destroy him and make sure it's painful. I love unstable architecture. What a wuss. There we go. The world is saved. <laughs> that Ripto has caused enough damage. All his meddling has cost me a fortune. Worst. If it wasn't for Spyro, I'd be bankrupt. If Ripto were here, I'd give him a piece of my mind. In fact, I'd give him a lot more than that. How amazing, he just I got there like right then and there. I boxer at university, and I still know a few moves. Take that, and that. Boo. Ah! Why are you, you? <laughs> <laughs> dead. Oh, I'm dead. I like how Ripto doesn't have a lot going for him, but like, the occasional moments. The occasional moments are just like, nah man, pure evil. Bad <laughs> time, exactly. Yeah. Um, you know one thing, I, I didn't even comment on it, but uh, this game has loading screens. Like, I mean, I know the first game, you'd go through a portal and it's clearly loading the next level. I'm gonna kind of hold off touching any gems because we're going to leave the second world for another stream but I want to go back just to that one last level and also to get the skill well, point well, to hours again. I bet a rich dragon like you wouldn't mind cashing in a few gems to learn how to climb. I'd be willing to teach you for say, I don't know, a small fee? A small fee? It's 500. You won't regret it. Okay, when you see a wall surface that looks climbable, like the one to my left here, just jump onto it, and you will grab it with your claws. Exactly. Use the D-pad to move up and down, and press jump again to get off. You can also jump sideways onto another climbable area. Oh my goodness, jumping sideways. So, anyway, I can now climb. Uh, you'll have these little portals, and these actually take you back. There's one, there's two pairs of these portals in a each hub world, and they just take you back to each of the hubs. Um, so uh, particularly this will drop us off. Uh, yeah, here we go. Yeah, in the first hub. So now I'm going to swim my way, and we're going to swim all the way to getting the last few gems and stuff from the hub world, and there's a whole level I just kind of glossed over, which I'll also cover. 
So now that I've got the ability to climb, is Laura gonna mention it? There's something shiny at the top of this wall. Maybe you could climb up and get it. Yeah, maybe I could. <laughs> that is true, so. Anyways, 4070. Uh, 4070, uh, not much to say other than, uh, if you ignore the price, the card is actually kind of neat. It performs just as well as the 3080, which isn't like a huge generational improvement compared to many other cards. Uh, but honestly, that's the kind of price difference I kind of expected. I'm missing 10 gems. 10? Why am I missing 10? I'm going to look for the other 10 gems because I know I'm going to go mad if I don't have those gems. Oh, maybe they're just like, yeah, they're just here. I just jumped down immediately. This is the second half. I'm trying to think, could you actually, hold on, you go, so without buying the climbing power, could you go into the one portal, then go back into this one, you'd technically be after where you need to climb for the hub world? You'd be screwed in a handful of levels because you don't have the climbing ability, but I'm just curious if... In theory, you could get that far without the climbing. I know in practice, I know there's the exploits to beat the whole game without getting any of the abilities. But I'll save that for, for a bit later. So anyway, Sunny Beach. Let's actually get the stuff in it. Uh, but yeah, no, 4070. It seems alright though, because it does consume much less power than the 3080. Um, uh, so much so that it actually can work off a single 8-pin power supply. Uh, or sorry, uh, power PCIe connection, which is really good. I skipped over this guy earlier. Spyro. It's a good thing you're here. If you can help us with baby turtles over oh. there to safety, I'll be mighty grateful. Turtle jump scare. So yeah, I, I kind of explained this concept earlier when I rushed through this level. But yeah, you just gotta push the big turtle, the little turtles will come through and start swimming around and stuff. But there's a lot more areas than, than what I showed off. Particularly, there's a lot more gems right here. As well as also these giant boxes with a turtle on it. It's very croc too. There's the, there's the box with a thing on it, just here. Also, if you stick your head out, uh, you'll notice that there's a little, little hidey hole behind the start. A little turtle up here. Shock troopers. Yeah. The uh, only thing with the 4070 is the price. 599 US dollars isn't the worst. But it definitely isn't like crazy aggressive. Some people also say it's a price hike compared to the 40, uh, the 3070, which was 4.99, um, which I agree. I, I'm not a big fan of like the base price being higher. Here in Australia, this converted to 11.09, uh, 1,109 dollars. The 4070 Ti has been readily available at least at 11.99, 90 dollars more. There is no reason to buy a 4070 at 11.09 a strap. Now, some retailers started undercutting. Day one, they started undercutting to 10.99 and 10.89. Every world dollar is like that meme with the girls at that party in one dress. Yes, yes, exactly, exactly. Um, some retailers started undercutting for 10.89. One retailer, just very briefly, 9.99. Uh, someone on Oz Bargain, uh, actually, I, I, it's gone 9.49, and someone has then gone, hey, you can get a 10% rebate on this, so it's now 8.56. And at that point, $856 for a graphics card that costs 11.09 three days ago. There is no reason, I think, and, and, well, actually, not no reason, because, uh, in America, a lot of these cards do keep their retail price. Capitalism has gone too far. Oh, exactly. Um, here in Australia, we are so savvy on prices that we just see, like, all these launch prices of cards and just scoff. We're like, no way. The fact that we have gotten this card down $250 from its retail price in three days shows how remarkably, <laughs> remarkably flexible and, uh, I guess elastic Australian uh, tech can really be. The number of people who looked at the 47 and said, yeah, that's a good price. Nah, man. We all looked at that and we're like, yeah. Um, it's such a shame that the lower, that last gen cards are, you know, they went back up in price. The water workers have boxed up most of our baby turtles. The boxes are incredibly strong. With a more powerful flame breath, maybe you could break them open and release the turtles. 
uh, when Russian national spirit were trying to get things. Oh, exactly, exactly, yeah. So, what I hope is that, yeah, I, I wish that the older graphics cards were not as expensive as they were. We, we in Australia had a crazy massive price gap where you could not get a graphics card, like the 6700 XT was like $550, and it still probably is, I think. But the 6800, just the next tier up, 900 bucks. There's just a $350 gap with no AMD graphics cards. The Nvidia graphics cards were all overpriced as well, so it's like, uh, the like, like the 3070 also is like 900 bucks again, and it's like, uh, the 3060 Ti was well not worth it. Um, at least for a long time. The Intel cards are alright, but they only go up to like 550 bucks, so it's like, oh, okay. They don't compete. So the the 4070 is. Uh, Better or for worse, at 850 bucks, kind of the de facto card now at that price. In Russia, Chinese people already sell RTX for original Switch price. Really? The original Switch? Listen, I, 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 guess, I guess my the thing that kind of blows my mind is I, I keep looking at like US pricing, and all of the last gen like graphics cards have all, always been the launch price still. They've barely gone under their launch price. Um, maybe AMD cards do a little bit, uh, but at least for NVIDIA, like the 4070 Ti is still that Hello, 799 starting There's price. There's a chef up at the top of this um, ladder who wants to make soup Which out is of weird, because here, and maybe myself included, I bought stuffing. the card for like 180 bucks less than retail price two weeks after release. And it went down another 100 in the month after. Imagine having a choice between RTX or such. I would buy a Switch. Oh, here's my favorite character. I love him. Your turtle friends happen to make a very good soup. If I can catch them, you can try to save them if you like. But I'm feeling awfully hungry. I love him. We used, oh, well, I guess, is it an Australian show? We had an Australian show called MasterChef. There's probably British versions of it. I, this guy would be in my head every time we see it. Um, but there's a giant pot in the middle. He rings the bell. And then a bunch of turtles come out to their uh, lonesome death. Your goal is to either flame them, where they will turn and waddle the other way, or charge them, and hopefully they bounce the right way into the water. Did I hear a word that starts on F and ends on C? So, you saved from the Master Chef. Yeah, more where those came from. Here, take this orb and go away. A CK. Oh yeah, fire truck. Yeah. <laughs> It looks like Jontron. Jontron was a blue pear. That's probably a bit of an insult. You have to kind of remind yourself that. If you step a little closer uh, to the pot, I'll start ringing my bell again. <laughs> probably did. This is a five star difficulty. This is apparently one of the hardest things in the game right here. I don't think that difficulty is even like crazy accurate. Most people are going to try and collect it on this game anyways. But I will say, this second round goes really hard. Like. As in, just, it's gnarly. Because I'm going to start bumping them. They're going to start going all over the place. And he's going to keep getting more and more turtles. And they're going to keep bouncing off everything. Oh. No. Nah, nah, nah. He's, he's a cooked turtle. He's gone. He's a goner. <laughs> he's a goner. <laughs> oh. Who can say where the road goes? <laughs> Ah, oh, they're not quite going where I want them to. The worst part about charging into them is if they stop really close, it's like, ugh. I think it's like 10 turtles you gotta do, though. As long as you get your rhythm right, you should be safe. And he bounces. I don't think he went in. Oops. No, he did not go in. That guy's gonna... <laughs> He's going, he's going in a fun direction. Alright, let's get this guy. That guy. There we go. Easy. Easy. This feels like more than 10 turtles, though. Well, the more I think about it, I think this is the last one. And if it's not, then whoops. Oh, well, there's one more. Now we're good. Rats! You 
you save every turtle on the beach. Here, take this. I was gonna use it to buy potatoes, but now I don't need it. You don't need potatoes. <laughs> It's a good one. I love this one. He's got a bunch of gems in his uh, turtle pot as well. T turtle pond? I love how high up this is though. And it's just high up, just so you need the, the ladder. The ladder climb, that's all you need. Um, anyway, we've hit the end of the level. Uh, so if I was to move this turtle all the way to the end, we'd get the talisman. Again. Uh, but yeah, so, second moral of the story, just wait on graphics card prices, they always seem to get cheaper anyways. At least in Australia, in the US, good luck. Baby turtles will be or look for the used market, Please take don't let people gouge you on that. As a token and again, of you don't need a new graphics card. No matter what anyone says, if your stuff works, it works. If you don't have a graphics card, I don't know, maybe, maybe go with a stock gap solution, just go with a cheaper one that gets the job done right now, until... You know, cheaper ones actually come out. Don't feel like you have to pay 800 US dollars or seven, 600 US dollars for a graphics card. Is it not? I, I would gladly wish that Intel's graphics cards were a little bit more stable, but you know, at least here in Australia, their pricing is super aggressive. So, anyways, this is the one super flame in the whole level. You've got to use this super flame in order to get all the turtles out of the boxes. You don't exactly have to free them from uh, the door captivity, but they love you for doing it. I love the hearts. There's so many hearts. They love you. Uh, you also have to make sure you use this uh, super flame just to destroy this one chest. It's just there. I'll come back for it. This one box over here that I need to quickly get. There you go. They love me. Yeah, is there anything else technology related? I don't have any real like gaming news today. Uh, it's been two weeks and not really too much to say, but uh. I guess in the past week I've been playing mostly through, uh, or two weeks, I've been mostly playing through doing a Professor Oak's Challenge in Pokemon Silver. I tried it before, I'm now actually doing it now, and I realize, including when I play Pokemon Gold, and I never mentioned this, I have never caught Raikou, Suicune, and Entei. I've never caught all three of them. Uh... I think I walked past one of the boxes. <laughs> it's not up where the, where the chef is. They didn't hide it up there. Oh, it's it's up on the high wall, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's up on the high wall. Is it up on the high wall? It's not up on the high wall. Maybe it's just... There, yeah, it's just here. I was blind. Impressive! 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 Please take this sacred, uh, thingamajig as a token of our everlasting gratitude. Also, mm. now, now we know that all the orbs were literally just, the fairies were putting them in places. They were just hiding them. And all these people who have never seen orbs before, they're just like, oh, look at this. And they just hold on to it, put it in weird spots, forget about it. Who knows. I don't believe there's actually any plot, like, that we don't know of anymore. Like, the backstory is pretty much all known. That's where Ripto came from. That's just what all these characters were doing. We we're just making a portal. Who knows? We get to see this again. Why not? Yeah. So before I finish the stream, let's just get the skill point in Aquaria Towers, which may involve having to hit all the buttons again, but shouldn't take too long. 1600 treasure though, but yeah, I still like this game. I'll rip into it sometimes, but nah, I still like it. Yeah, well it's a bit wacky, uh, anything else to me playing? Not really. 
I put down Nino Kuni too because I, I I kind of felt that the the post game grind was a bit too harsh. Uh, at least for the super boss kind of things that the achievements wanted you to do. But I played the story. That was kind of all I needed. All right, let's try and go through this quick. Oh, and you'll need the super flame, so I guess I need to take out a bunch of enemies. Whoops. It's a bit of an annoying skill point, this one. Like, uh, the, the gist of it is that there's a bunch of seaweed in the level, and you need to destroy all the seaweed. And the seaweed can only be destroyed with fire, but all the seaweed is underwater, which means you need the super flame. And that's the, uh, that's the reason why it's a bit of an obscure one. Is there any seaweed right here? I, I want to say all the seaweed is just topside, but we'll, we'll see in a bit. Hello. Look at the crabs on the ceiling, like, who, who did that? Um, yeah, uh, definitely would recommend playing this game, by the way. If you have not played it, uh, definitely give it a go. Um, and, uh, yeah, the Steam remaster or the Xbox One or it's on the Switch as well, like all the consoles basically. That remaster does a good job. Hopefully that remaster stays until the end of time. Although they did something, well, I, I say they did something weird with Alora's model but I also feel like, uh, you know, <laughs> it's an either or. You prefer one or the other. Hunter's model is, uh, I, I, I kind of like his very low poly version of this game. Spyro is as detailed as always. Um, everything else is, yeah, you know, confines of the PS1. They really tried their best, though. I, I will say that. Like, this game for 1999, like, because, especially by 1999, you know, the Dreamcast is out and kicking. It's it's swinging in full force. We're starting to get games like, uh, was Crazy Taxi out by now? I think it was. And it's like, you know, PS1 games had to really try to, you know, flex their muscles. Alright, we're looking for seaweed, like this. You flame it, it just breaks. You want to get all the seaweed. The seaweed has a bit of a horrendous draw distance. But hopefully I will find all the seaweed. There's more seaweed. There is more seaweed over there. I want to say there is seaweed to my left. There is still more seaweed. Must be seaweed deeper in the level. So, anyways, get all the seaweed. That's a school point. I need to do this because otherwise you won't see the uh, the bonus thing for getting all the skill points. This is a very vital part of the game. So vital that, despite the fact that I've played this game twice on my channel before, I never actually. Oh, it's right there, isn't it? This one always gets me. Yeah, I'd never actually gotten all the skill points on uh, on video. Get the seaweed. There we go. I don't know if there's any seaweed down here, but I'll just peruse around so I know where the seaweed is. I want to say the seaweed's actually right near the end. The backside, so let's back up. Yeah, kind of annoying that it's the only uh, the only super flame in the whole level, but you know, I guess that's also the point. And also, yeah. It's a skill point. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. Must be in here. There's a bit of seaweed. Oh, there's a bit more seaweed. Lots of seaweed. There it is. Easy. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> Alright, that didn't take too long. So I think that's that's it. I, I feel like that's probably enough for, for a stream. That's the entirety of the first world, which I feel like is the most balanced of all the worlds. I'm going to try my best. <laughs> we'll, we'll try and squeeze the entire second world into one stream, even though uh, the second world consists of eight levels compared to this one's six. So but I'm hoping that without a bit of the intro cutscenes and all that stuff, it'll roll a little smoother. I'm curious, this is probably going to put me at the, the back end of the, the world though, isn't it? This warp here. 
Yeah, maybe it will. Who knows? Here we go. Oh. No, I'm back at the front. <laughs> I'm back at the front. Alright. Well, open the guidebook just so you can see what has happened. We have the Autumn Plains, which I have not done anything in. We defeated Crush. I got rings, archers, boats, cars, all in one. We did the seahorse stuff and uh, rode a manta ray. Turtle soup. Uh, <laughs> gear grinders. Uh, hockey. Uh, Hula girl rescue, sure. Uh, and uh, lots of gem lamps. All in one. As well as also just climbing in places. There wasn't really any... Like explicit challenges in the the summer forest, I think. Um, but yeah, I th I feel like that's a fairly, you know, effective stream. Lots of stuff done. So with that, I would like to thank you so very very, very much for watching. If you did enjoy this, um, yeah, you can follow or like, you know, the good old stuff. And uh, if you miss bits of this, the vods on YouTube soon. Unless you're on YouTube, in which case you better subscribe on YouTube so you get told when the vod comes out. Um, but that's about it. That's all I really gotta say. Uh, also. Uh, Please enjoy the subtitles. Whisper's been doing a good job, and I want to see how well it knows uh, Spyro 2 level names. Probably not. If I say Huracos, does it know what Huracos is? Does it capitalize Huracos? Just give that a check. Um, but yeah, uh, other than that, yeah, have a solid week ahead. I will be streaming every week. We're back to streaming every week now, uh, until pretty much until Christmas. We'll see. Um, but yeah, stay safe, eat your greens, uh, don't buy into Reddit making a huge hyperbole out of one review site's opinion. I love how they say like, oh, these are the only review sites that count, and then it's just like, uh, you kind of count every single one of them. Even if you hate them, it's like, well, why are they wrong? Who knows? So, anyways, have a good one, everyone. I don't know where I'm going with this. Woo!